हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर आशा पाटिल फ्रॉम एस एन डी टी वीमेन्स यूनिवर्सिटी मुंबई टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अल्टरनेट सिस्टम्स ऑफ एजुकेशन फॉर्मल एंड नॉन फॉर्मल एजुकेशन एजुकेशन इज अ कंटिन्यूस प्रोसेस वन कैन लर्न फ्रॉम नेचर एंड सराउंडिंग्स फ्रॉम पेरेंट्स एंड सिबलिंग्स फ्रॉम नेबर्स एंड रिलेटिव In other words, our informal education starts from birth within the family. Learning happens, and no one has a particular intention of either teaching or learning. We learn through observations and imitation. Nowadays, due to explosion of technology and media, one can also learn from various electronic media such as. television radio mobile films etc this type of learning is known as informal education education is a long term investment in human capital it helps the growth and development of an individual as well as the nation the learning objectives of this module are define formal and non formal education distinguish between formal and non formal education state characteristics of non formal education explain need for alternate modes of education when we talk about types of education we usually categorize education in three categories namely informal education formal education and non formal education all of us are familiar about formal education as most of us have studied in formal education system at some point of life some of us might have learned through non formal education system as well all of us learn something or other by the informal way in educational literature the study of alternative education systems often mentions open systems non formal education distance learning non conventional studies among other terms sometime they are used synonymously in this module we will analyze the concepts of formal non formal and informal education their features and characteristics and difference between formal and non formal education advantages limitations and their interrelations are also going to be discussed let us see the definitions coombs in 1973 has defined typology of educational programs as follows let us see the first information informal education the truly lifelong process whereby every individual acquires attitudes values skills and knowledge from daily experience and the educative influences and resources in his or her environment from family and neighbors from work and play from the marketplace the library and the mass media the formal education means the hierarchically structured chronologically graded educational system running from primary school through the university and including in addition to general academic studies a variety of specialized programs and institutions for full time technical and professional training the meaning of non formal education as stated by kum includes any organized educational activity outside the established formal system whether operating separately or as an important feature of some broader activity that is intended to serve identifiable learning clientele and learning objectives according to grand staff in 1973 non formal education is intimately connected with the realization of economic growth approach to development 
he stated that due to the flexibility and responsiveness of non-formal education, it is possible to go into the situation in which education is to be introduced. UNESCO has defined non-formal education in some other, another way. According to UNESCO, any organized and sustained educational activities that do not correspond exactly to the definition of formal education. So, the concepts of education are changing very fast, especially in globalized world. Let us see in detail the types of education. We will start from informal education. The truly lifelong process in which every individual acquires attitudes, values, skills and knowledge from daily experiences. It is through individuals own family, relatives, neighbors, marketplace, workplace and media as well. Informal education happens throughout our life. It consists of learning activities that are voluntary and self-directed. Due to motivation mainly by intrinsic interest and curiosity, exploration, manipulation, fantasy, task completion and social interaction, one learns through informal ways. Informal learning occurs in or out of school settings. It can be linear or non-linear. Often it is self-paced. It provides an experiential base and motivation for further activity and learning. The outcomes of informal learning experiences in science, mathematics, technology include a sense of fun and wonder. It helps for a better understanding of concepts, topics and processes. Informal education is unpredictable. It happens in the moment. In informal education, the person learns by responding to any situation and maybe through experiences. It does not have either any prescribed learning framework nor organized learning event or any packages. Now, what is more important is that those who learn through informal education have hardly any control over the environment or any situation. A considerable amount of education happens beyond the school walls, outside the academic books. There is a need to recognize it. Self-directed learning opportunities are ample. One can learn from musical events, art exhibitions, visit to places of environmental and historic interest. So, informal way of learning are more. Let us see the formal education. Formal education is a systematic, hierarchically structured, organized, chronologically graded education system running from primary school to the university. Usually at the age of 5 years, one enters in formal schools. It is institutional activity. It is a subject oriented and usually leads to certificates. After completion of one grade, one can enter the higher grade. For example, after completion of standard 1, one can take admission in standard 2. It has general academic studies as well as a variety of specialized technical and professional training programs. Formal education system is structured and administered in a set of laws and norms. It has rigid curriculum with fixed objectives, content and methodology. It involves teachers, the students and the institution as well as infrastructure. Formal education is usually offered through schools, colleges and universities. Classroom attendance is compulsory for students. It involves intermediate and final assessments in order to advance students to the next learning stage. 
it confers degrees and diplomas pursuant to a quite strict set of regulations assessments are done usually at the end of academic year in schools and bi yearly in colleges based on semester system assessment is done on general basis assessment follows mono directional methodology which fails to stimulate students pattern of examination is fixed formal education system does not take into consideration the efficiency and efficacy of students the subjects are presented in isolated blocks in general the objectives aimed at the personal growth of students are neglected according to unesco report that is alternative approaches to school education at primary level formal education mostly concentrates on bookish knowledge there is no place in the school program for learning experiences that a child brings to school such as participating in family or neighborhood activities acquiring skills relating to family vocations etc these observations mentioned in the report are still relevant even after two decades the basic principles of learning are not given much importance while planning curriculum and teaching learning methods in this system teachers are givers and learners are takers or learners are receivers in other words in this system teachers pretend to teach students pretend to learn and institutions pretend to be really catering to the interests of students and of the society in short formal education system is far away from the real needs of the students the setting up of a formal education system does not consider the student standards values attitudes that are relevant to the education system the subjects are presented in isolated blocks in general the learning objectives of students are neglected the basic principles of learning are overlooked in the planning of formal education it will not be exaggerated to say that in such case of no formal education mostly teachers pretend to teach students pretend to learn and institutions pretend to be really catering to the interests of students and society thus generally formal education remains aloof in catering the needs of the students and of community at large let us see the details of non formal education before going into the detail one must understand the background of non formal education and how it is introduced in the education system way back in 1972 the unesco put forth the concept of learning society to achieve this education should reach to all age groups and all sections of the society for this out of school education becomes as important as formal education it was realized that learning could not be confined to a particular place time or age group thus the idea of non formal education came up the term non formal education was first used in the early 1970s the intention was to make people aware about other types of education though since ages people were practicing non formal education for teaching religious practices learning crafts from older generations agricultural tasks learning language cooking etc but it did not became a parallel system to formal education it was in late 1970s educational activities organized outside the established formal system 
were recognized as non-formal education activities. The concept of non-formal education has undergone changes over a period of time. Some people believe non-formal education as a complementary to the formal education. Others think it is an alternative to the formal system. In other words, it is being conceived as an organized activity outside the formal system. According to Professor Malcolm Adisheshai, the non-formal education is wide ranging because it comprehends all learning outside of the formal system, has no parameters of time and space. It can be classified for preschool, unschool and underschool children in the age group of 1 to 15 years and for youth and adults or needing new additional skills in the age group of 15 to 60 years. Based on learning content, non-formal education can be grouped under two heads which are activities where the major emphasis is on general education and activities which mainly focus on vocational skills. Family and other local institutions play an important role in non-formal education. For instance, children or youth pick up vocational skills by helping in the work done by their families. Take the example are carpentry, pottery, etc. Women learn to manage household chores or upbringing of children, religious educations organized in temples and mosques etc. are examples of non-formal education. In all these, literacy is not necessary. Mostly, it is acquired through oral communication and actual participation. It is also worthy to note that the non-formal education system has a variety of types meant for different groups of individuals as per their needs and situations. Let us see what is the need of non-formal education? Education plays a pivotal role in social reconstruction and development of a person. In today's globalized world, where knowledge explosion is taking place continuously, linear expansion of non-formal education is both desirable and inevitable. There is a direct relationship between education and economic expansion. It reflects in gross net product of a nation. Thus, education sector is expected to meet the growing requirements of a trained middle and high level manpower for the sustained growth of economy. As the cost of formal education is increasing day by day, government is not willing to invest in it and thus promoting privatization. Also, formal educational system have adopted too slowly to the socio-economic changes around them. Thus, there is a need to some parallel system which can fulfill the needs of people. Millions of people in the world are still living in conditions of poverty, hunger, ill health and illiteracy. Their basic elementary needs are not fulfilled in spite of technological development. Increasing the gap between the haves and have nots is resulting into uneven development. The main reason behind this is illiteracy. On one hand, percentage of literacy is increasing and on other hand, absolute numbers of illiterates are increasing. To educate crores of illiterates irrespective of sex, age, skilled or unskilled, able or disabled, non-formal education system should not be developed. In most of the developing countries, the enrollment of children in the school and their sustenance is not 100%. As a result, school dropout rate of children is very high. Competency level of those students who complete the primary education is also questionable. Many a times, 
it is not possible for a government to provide formal education for its population. Sometimes there are many individuals who cannot attain the formal education due to their own situations or problems. In both the situations, only alternative left is non-formal education. Non-formal education happens outside the formal education system. It is more flexible in all aspects such as age, place, time, curriculum and examination. It considers the needs and convenience of learners. It mobilizes local resources. It also enriches human and environmental potential. Thus, it can be called as an alternative system for formal education system. Hence, it is more useful for school dropouts, working children, men, women, poor people who cannot afford formal school. Non-formal education is student friendly system. It does not require student attendance, thus decreasing the contacts between teacher and student. Most of the activities take place outside the structured institution. It has flexible curricula and flexible teaching methodology. This system is capable of adapting to the needs and interests of students for which time is not a pre-established factor but is contingent upon the student's workplace. It emphasizes to fulfill the needs of students. Non-formal education prepares students to deal with daily problems. Non-formal education is capable of adapting to the interests of students as it is need based. The current formal education system is inadequate to meet effectively, efficiently the needs of individuals and of the society. There is a need to fulfill demands of growing number of people. The formal education system has limitations. It cannot reach all sections of the society as it is rigid and also expensive. In India, though primary education is free, only certain sections of the society can afford middle school and higher education. There are large number of children belonging to deprived classes who remain away from formal education system due to poverty, migration and other reasons. Hence, there is a dire need to have non-formal education. It gives them second chance to get education. Government of India has implemented many schemes to enroll the out of school children. In formal education, there is very limited scope for learning. Non-formal education meets certain demands of the market. If non-formal education is implemented carefully, education will reach all the individuals of all age groups. Let us see the scope of non-formal education in India. Formal education system exists in all countries. Non-formal education is just a complementary system to formal education. As stated earlier, non-formal education is need based, flexible and cost effective. In addition to the central and state governments, Non-formal education is also offered by non-governmental organizations who have played a major role in implementing the non-formal education programs. Most of the time, it is misunderstood that non-formal education is for school dropouts and for poor people or only for weaker sections of the society. But it is partially true. Non-formal education gives a second chance to those who have left the schools in, be in between. It also gives the chance to learn those who never had been to schools, who have missed the chance. For example, adult education for illiterates. Looking at the very nature of non-formal education, 
one can say that it is an instrument for development of personal, economic as well as political. It helps in improving productivity as it focuses on skill development. Let us see who is the target group for non-formal education, to whom it serves. It is intended for all age groups and sections of society, including child, youth and adults, working and non-working men and women, the unemployed and leisure, illiterate, semi-literate, unliterate people or educated people, urban, rural as well as tribal people. In other words, all categories of people, if and when they need, if and when they want, will be in the position to use non-formal opportunities for learning. Even those who are in informal education system or who have benefited from it also need non-formal education for personal fulfillment, maybe for professional growth or deeper understanding at all the stages of life. However, benefits from formal education system have been largely drawn by privileged section of society. Non-formal education is mostly attended by underprivileged people, the poor, landless, illiterate, women and tribal. This is necessary to bring the equitable society. Priority should be given to those who have been neglected for a long time. Non-formal education takes into account the interests, needs and will of the learner. Non-formal education serves to a variety of people which includes school dropouts, adult illiterates and semi-literates, unemployed youth, differently able children and adults, workers from unorganized sector, poor marginalized people and those who do not fit into the formal education system. Now let us see the characteristics of non-formal education. There are variety of characteristics which distinguishes it from formal education, which makes it different from formal education as well as informal education. Non-formal education is highly participative, non-hierarchical and learning happens in spontaneous environment. Here all participants are both teacher and learners. Non-formal education is for all irrespective of age, sex, class, maybe poor, rich, anybody who is willing to learn can join it. It is flexible in many aspects such as duration, time, curriculum, methodology of teaching and evaluation of outcome. There is no fixed criteria for admission. It is need based, any demand based, anybody can join. It is learner centric, it is skill based and job oriented. It is also available on job and off job and very importantly it is affordable. Anyone can afford this non-formal education. Let us see the objectives of non-formal education. According to UNESCO, certain objectives of non-formal education are as follows. First, to promote awareness through literacy education programs and acceptance of learning as a means to individual and national development. To establish national infrastructural needs and provide for manpower requirements. To provide equal educational opportunities to all and through them more equitable distribution of national income and employment avenues. To mobilize existing and potential local resources in the community to facilitate 
transfer of appropriate technology to more need based areas of activity. Let us see the difference between formal and non-formal education. Following table explains distinction between formal education and non-formal education. Three factors are considered factors for formal education and non-formal education. The first factor is admission or entry point. In formal education, entry point is required. Minimum level of for entry point are pre-decided. Whereas in non-formal education, clientele determines entry requirement. Whenever he or she needs, she can enter into the non-formal education. The second factor is infrastructure. Formal education requires a fixed infrastructure with classrooms, laboratories, library, etc. Teaching takes place within four walls, which is very much isolated from natural environment. In non-formal education, it does not require a fixed structure. Teaching can take place anywhere, anytime. You, the venue can be selected as per the convenience of the learner. For example, learning and teaching can take place below the tree, at the chaupals, in the workshops, within the factory, sometimes even at the temples or in open air. Also on the form, non-formal education can be conducted. The, fact, the third factor is attendance. In formal education, attendance is compulsory. Whereas in non-formal education, attendance is optional. Let us see the point teaching methodology. In formal education, the teaching methodology is very rigid. Usually lecture method is used. Whereas in non-formal education, mostly participatory teaching methodology is used. It is a democratic way where the learners can do self-analysis and reflection on the learning. Goals and curriculum or syllabus if you consider in formal education, the goals are fixed, syllabus is also fixed, syllabus and the curriculum is decided by outsiders and they themselves decide the goals. Nowhere learners or students are involved in deciding the curriculum and syllabus. The syllabus may not be relevant to the learners, whereas in non-formal education, there is flexibility. The goals are diversified and flexible. There is no fixed syllabus. Invol involvement of learners in framing the curriculum is possible in non-formal education. In other words, the content is learner-centric. It mainly focuses on the current issues of the learners. That is why it is called individualized or output oriented curriculum. The next point is learning. In formal education, learning may take place in the classroom. There is no guarantee whether the students are learning or not learning. Only syllabus completion is focus. Students may get passing certificate just by copying or mugging up. Whereas in non-formal education, there is surety of learning. The learners definitely learn as per their set objectives. In formal education, the focus is on teaching rather than learning. Whereas in non-formal education, the focus is on learners learning. Let us see the point approach. In formal education, it is authoritative. Teacher and headmasters are at the authority level, whereas learners and students are at the receiving end. It is a hierarchy and especially externally oriented. In non-formal education, learners and teachers sit together, there is a friendly relationship and democratically they take the decisions. Period and time. 
informal education specific and limited duration in the early life of an individual is there the formal education can be taken maybe up to 15 years or maybe up to 20 years and it is expected that whatever the learner or whatever the student has learned will enrich him throughout his life whereas in non formal education it is a continuous process there are no fixed timings for classes any time learner can come and learn the purpose of formal education is long term and general whereas in non formal education it's a short term and very very specific the investment in terms of years is in formal education it is a time consuming minimum 8 to 15 years are required to complete the graduation and it's a full time whereas non formal education has a short duration it's a part time one can learn as per their pace and time let us see various forms of non formal education learning develops capacity of a person as non formal education is need based the clientele who joins the non formal education are ready or willing to learn new skills it helps them to gain new knowledge it increases their ability to function more effectively in changing society non formal education serves to a diverse group of clientele following are some of the most popular forms of non formal education used in 21st century first is correspondence education it is planned organized and structured many universities in the world offer correspondence courses they include a variety of courses including professional one people from all age groups and economic social classes enroll for correspondence courses students who enroll for these courses get printed educational material quality of this material is really debatable some of the universities also provide cds as well there is no face to face contact of students and teachers on a regular basis sometimes guidance lectures are organized which are optional for students to attend correspondence learning system allows students to proceed at their own pace the student's motivation is the basic factor for the program's success the second type is distance education the concept of distance education is wider than that of correspondence education print as well as electronic devices are used in this system nowadays a large number of universities are offering online courses which are through distance mode the online learning may be synchronous or asynchronous these courses are designed specifically for those who cannot attend the formal education system may be due to their job or work in other words it provides an opportunity to learners to learn even though they are separated by time and distance students submit assignments online and also get feedback through same mode the organization and administration of distance learning significantly differs from those of formal education thus for instance no students attend classes at the institution except for occasional visitors the curriculum and assessment strategies are not uniform in all universities who offer distance education courses instructional design for non formal education the very nature of non formal education is flexible hence it is not confined to any one single instructional design it is open to innovations while designing instruction one has to keep in mind following factors that is curriculum should be need based and also reflect national priorities 
instructions should be dependent on type of the content. Teaching methodology should be dependent on local situations. There are four types of instructional designs. The first one is content center approach, second is problem focused approach, third is concentration approach and human development and creative planning approach. Each one of these is explained in detail in following paragraphs. Content centered approach. This approach is usually used in programs where a specific knowledge is to be transferred to people. Initially, a baseline survey of learners is conducted to know the minimum levels of competency. Experts find the knowledge, attitude and practices used by people. Based on this, new information is given to people to fill the gap and achieve the desired competency level. Let us take the example of programs on contraceptives, family planning, low cost nutrition and modern agricultural practices. Curriculum in this approach mainly focuses on knowledge, attitude and practices gap. Usually content is divided into small units or messages. Various methods such as discussion with the help of charts and posters, personal counseling, demonstrations, role play are used to deliver the message. For example, if one wants to give information on child spacing, one can use personal counseling method. For information on low cost nutritious dishes, one can use demonstration method. Variety of methods can be used to explain problem focused approach. This method focuses on problem solving. It helps learners to solve their day to day problems. It helps learners to generate information to find out the root causes of the problem and its solution as well. For example, alcoholism. One can find out the reason behind drinking habits, its effects and solution to overcome this habit. Consentization approach. This is based on Paulo Freire's philosophy. It deals with issues of power imbalance and the exploitation of the poor by wasted interests. By using this method, poor can become aware about their situation develop their power to fight for their rights collectively. Content and methods in this approach are designed in such a way that learners are promoted to think and analyze the issues critically. Based on the reflections, people take action. For example, rights of the domestic servants. The third approach is human development and creative planning approach. In this approach, it focuses on developing learners creative and planning capacities. This will enable them to function more dynamically and effectively as decision makers, planners and change agent. This approach encourages creativity innovations in which they will be helped to improve the quality of their living. Perspectives of non-formal education. Non-formal education has promising feature in globalized world as continuous information explosion is taking place. Non-formal education is need based which helps for individual as well as national development. Recommendations. The existing formal education system needs radical transformation if meaningful development of all is to be made. It should focus on development of skills. A multiple entry system should be developed along with considerable flexibility in the choice, content and duration of the courses.
the content of education should be relevant to the learner's life and job market as well. To conclude, I would like to say education is essential for development, personal as well as the nation. It brings transformation from a state of powerlessness into a state of power, achieved through knowledge. It helps to take decisions and actions to overcome the hurdles in development. Non-formal education can play a vital role in the much needed radical reform in education system, especially in India. Thank you.